Okay, now I have uh, 10 or so markers laid in here, and it's time for me to record the camera movement or figure out how the camera is moving with the Blender camera tracking. Okay, so um, I need to go to the left sidebar again. If you don't have that open, uh, you can uh, toggle it with a T. And uh, I need to, oops, actually uh, switched over to reconstruction mode down here. So I'm gonna need to be in tracking mode. Okay, there's my menu now. Um, marker, um, don't need to mess with that stuff. Okay, track, um, don't need to mess with that stuff right now. I'll twirl those up so they're out of our way. Uh, solve, okay, so um, I'm going to do a solve for the camera motion. Before I do this, one thing I need to do is come over to my right sidebar, which again, if you don't have that up, it's in on the keyboard. You can tap in to get that up. And I'll twirl all this stuff up uh, so it's a little less uh, cumbersome. Let's uh, twirl down the camera data. And uh, here you need to set the focal length that the footage was shot with. And you also can set the sensor width. Typically that is uh, 35. And um, by the way, I changed my pixel aspect ratio to 1.5 here instead of having it uh, at 1.5 there. So um, just FYI, you don't have to mess with the pixel ratio. Um, so I, I just wanted to point that out in case you were wondering why that was 1.5. Okay, the focal length that uh, I came up with for this camera is uh, 24 because I don't know actually what the uh, focal length of it was. I kind of did some trial and error and it's going to be about 24 millimeters, which is about the default um, focal length for most cameras. They also have a camera preset here. Uh, so they have uh, a bunch of Canon cameras and Nikon cameras, uh, they even have things like uh, the Red Epic, and uh, then down here they have the Sony A55. Not quite as cool as the Red Epic, but there you go. Um, okay, so you have to make sure that that stuff is all kosher, and then you can come over here, click on, um, you can't really see that, can you? Solve the camera motion click on that it processes for a minute and then it comes up with an average solve error down here you can see this is well may, you don't know but this is extremely low this is a great solve error of 0.6 anything up to one is really good anything up to three is pretty usable and uh, then you know past three you can maybe fake uh, something up to five and then you're getting into trouble. But uh, you can also, if you have a high solve error, you can twirl down the uh, the track here, and it gives you the error for each track. So if I select this track, for example, that's a little bit higher than the one that was just selected. This track, uh, nice uh, 0.5. So uh, if you have a track that is extremely high, you could delete that track and resolve without it, and that might give you a little bit better result. Okay, um, so we have that going going on. Um, we have the camera data in there, and the other thing we need to do now is switch over from tracking mode to reconstruction mode, and we need to tell the computer how this is oriented because it. It kind of has the camera movement now, but it doesn't know what it's pointed at. Or, you know, is it pointed at the floor? Is it pointed at a wall? You know, um, it needs to know that. So we have to select um, what I would recommend for this clip is selecting these three points that make up the floor and then clicking on under orientation, set floor. Another thing that you'll want to do is um, when you're actually shooting the footage, know kind of what the scale is. I happen to know that between these two points here is one meter. Uh, so I can select those two points by right clicking and holding down shift on both of those points. Remember, if you need to deselect everything or select everything, you can hit A on the keyboard 
but I'm just going to right click, right click with shift, and then set the scale between those two points to one. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Uh, we're now done with the tracking, and we can switch over to our 3D view. Okay, so when you switch to the 3D mode, um, the first thing, let's uh, go over here and check out these two panels, the one here that's called the uh, outliner, and the one here that is this properties. I don't know if I can. There we go. <laughs> properties. Okay. So uh, first of all, the the outliner shows everything that's going to show up in your uh, scene as far as the 3D stuff goes. So it doesn't include the uh, two dimensional stuff like film and images, but it has all the three-dimensional stuff. Um, and then below it, we have the properties. And it's kind of organized so that the stuff on the left is broader and more all-encompassing. And then it gets down into the more specific properties of a certain object. Anyway, let's uh, get right down to it. Click on the camera here in the, uh, in the outliner. And click on the camera in the properties and you can see then that here we have a sensor size here the same sort of deal we have presets um, to emulate actual cameras um, you can to a certain extent set the the depth of focus um, and the focal length let's click on the one that's next to the uh, camera properties and this is what we're finally interested in is constraints and so constraints are how any objects going to behave automatically so for example if, if i had a clamp to constraint it would mean that uh, if i had object a clamped to object b whenever i moved object a it would move object b as well and vice versa um, in the left column here, we have motion tracking and the camera solver is what we want. Quick uh, little lesson on navigating the 3D view. On your numeric keypad, you have um, all the options to navigate. Our uh, top view is 7, front is 1. Uh, three is side and uh, number five you typically want in a uh, com completely architectural um, or orthoscopic view and not a perspective view and then you can uh, swing the camera up or down or right or left with uh, four eight six two so it's kind of kind of just like playing a video game and uh, you can uh, go you can always switch to the camera mode the camera that you'll be rendering with with zero on the numeric keypad you can find this just by typing in blender keyboard map on uh, google so I'm, I'm going to uh, hit zero as i'm on blender and uh, here's my camera mode and if we just play this you'll see that it kind of imitates exactly what we saw in the movie clip editor okay right Okay, so um, if I want to uh, see the background image also, um, you have to go to the right sidebar here. And again, if you're seeing a bunch of stuff here, twirl all these up so that it's less messy. And then twirl down the background images panel. Uh, click on that, click add image, um, click on movie clip, and then zoom out a little bit if you just click on camera clip that puts the uh, clip from our uh, movie in there and now you can see it puts it at half opacity that we are working in 3d with that clip okay um, so what I want to do is I want to replace this woman um, so to speak with a cube just a, a cylinder that will represent her in this in the space actually let's, let's use a cylinder it's a little bit easier to uh, deal with and um, so what I'm going to do is on my numeric keypad 
go to, uh, I'm going to hit 7, noticing that her left foot is just about, mm, I don't know, about a, a, what would be a foot or so in real space behind this marker, okay? So, oops, and there you see that uh, it follows us into this view. To do um, a fix for that, go to the background images section again, and on the axis, just say only camera. Okay. All right. So now I need to uh, get a cylinder. I'll do a uh, the command to, to get something like that is shift A. And then you select under mesh uh, cylinder. There it is. Okay, and I'm not sure where it went. There it is. Okay, and you can position it with these arrows. Essentially where you think she's going to be. And um, here also I'm going to hit S for my scale. And just move that in. So it's much more, you know, her size. And uh, I'm going to switch back to camera view real quick. To remind myself. Okay, so these uh, these two far ones here are what I'm aiming for. And uh, so she would be kind of about there. Switch back to camera mode. Okay, and you can see that it's kind of on top of her. I'm going to use my scroll wheel to zoom out and then grab this blue one to kind of shift it down. And uh, now if we if we rotate, you can see that the cylinder is really matching her pretty well. And now I'm going to hit S to scale. I'm going to hit, uh, before I scale anything, um, Z to get my Z axis. And I'm just going to cover her up essentially with that. And uh, so now you'll see that uh, it's following her pretty well. Looks like it's not a perfect match, but it'll do for our purposes. And um, also, if we go to uh, the, oops, hit one on the keyboard to get our front view. And and by the way, if you're seeing something weird, you have some, like something like that. You have perspective view. That's five on the keyboard. And you can shift out of that to get a completely orthoscopic view and move it up so that you'll see that uh, it's right on the floor. And there we, do there we go. We're, we're done with that. That is taken the place of uh, the woman, essentially, in 3D space. And uh, now we need to import the bank. Okay, so we go up to the file menu go to append and we need to surf over to wherever you saved the bank blend file i saved it on my desktop bank click on bank and here you'll see all of the aspects of that blend file everything in its library well what we want to do is grab all of the objects so we open up um, object and we hit a to select everything and then um, there are some things that we don't need such as the camera because we already have a camera so oops I have to hold down shift I guess and click on camera and I think everything else we will probably want looks good so Go up here, link from the library of the bank scene into our file. And there you go. You can see that we have this bank scene. And you can see that there's a little bit of an issue because uh, the cylinder, the woman, is like right in the middle of uh, where that, uh, that bank scene is. Okay, so we need to, need to change this. So I'm going to go hit seven to get my um, top view um, let's bring it over here and then I'm going to hit R 
to rotate the whole thing and see what that gives me. You can tell that I am, you know, not really wanting anything super specific right now. See, I'll take the camera all the back, all the way back to frame one. Okay, and I'm gonna try to figure out where this would be. There we go. Hit zero. Now that tracking looks really good. Okay. Yeah. 